In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I built the walls for a DIY shed that I'm helping my brother build. This includes the building the studwork itself and also attaching the cladding. What you can actually see me doing now is cutting two pieces of timber. This is for the top and bottom rail for the back stud wall that we're going to be building. And this is very simple. These just need to be cut at exactly the same length. And then following that, we can cut the studs that are going to go in between the top and bottom rail. So you'll see here that my brother's marked the top and bottom rail out and I'm going to pass in the timbers and he's going to lay them in place at 400 centers all the way along the wall. And then following that, we're going to move to a slightly better camera view and you can see us fixing this together. Okay, so for the stud work, you can see I'm using a first fixed nail gun. Now, if you don't have access to a nail gun, the next best way to do this is going to be to screw it. And either way, it's completely acceptable. And the same rules apply. We just want to add two fixings to the end of each stud and that's going to hold them nice and securely in place. Once we've done that, we can go try it in place. You'll notice here that we've also done the side wall, which was built in exactly the same way. Um, we're just going to check these out to see what they look like in situ. And then we're actually going to be removing these to add the cladding. As you can see, they're both back onto an existing wall. So if we fix them in place now, it would be literally impossible to add the cladding. So we're going to do that on the floor. And you can see my brother here is adding the bottom piece of cladding first. And this piece here actually has a 50 mil overhang. So it overhangs the bottom of the studwork 50 mil. And this is going to allow us to slot over the base, which is going to protect the floor. It's just going to make things look a lot neater. So you can see I'm cutting, my brother's fixing. He's using a second fixed nail gun for this. Again, if you don't have access to a second fixed nail gun, you can do it manually with pins and a hammer. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. But the same rules apply, we're just adding two fixings into the face of each piece of cladding here and that's going to hold these really nice and securely. And it doesn't really matter that we can see the nails because obviously these walls back onto another surface. So the, the surface of these walls is not actually going to be visible. Okay, so you can see here, me and my brother are lifting it on. We're going to be slotting it over the edge there so that piece of cladding at the bottom just slots over the base with that nice little 50 mil overhang. We also have an overhang here on the back corner and the reason for this is we're not going to be able to add any trim to the back corner. So what we've decided to do is overhang the cladding and then we're just going to add a load of silicon into that corner. As you can see, my brother is adding that now. And then when these two walls meet together and that cladding overlaps, the silicon is just going to really seal that corner up and make it completely watertight. So we're going to pull them together. That's going to kind of squish all that silicon together, make it nice and tight. And once we're happy that that's in the correct position, I'm just going to fix it with some screws. So the screws that I'm using here are three and a half inch. And they're just standard wood screws. And I'm just going to be adding around five screws to the length of the stud work, just evenly sort of spacing them out. We've got a nice strong fixing on that corner. Once that's done, I'm going to also fix into the base. And because this is all timber, this is nice and easy. We can just screw straight in. And I'm just going to add one fix in, in between the studs in each section there. Obviously I'm going to do exactly the same on the side wall. And as you can see now, this is nice and solid. So the next walls we're going to be building are not going to be clad on the floor because obviously we have access to these walls. We can fix the cladding once the walls are in place. So you can see here we've built another wall and I'm straight away, as soon as this is in situ, I'm going to just grab the impact driver there and start banging some screws into the corner. And again, it's just going to be five screws. So you basically got one at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle, and then kind of one in between that towards the top and the bottom. Also, we're going to fix into the floor. One thing you will notice here as well, I'm not really checking this that much with a level. And the reason for that is the base is absolutely bang level. So now I'm just going to check it with a the level there. Really happy with that. You know, it barely needs moving at all. And then we can move on to the front wall. So one thing that occurred to me is I didn't actually show you how to do the marking out. So you can see me doing some marking out here on this wall. So we're going to be marking the studs and we're also going to be marking for the door opening. But more importantly, it's the technique of marking out here that's the most important lesson, if you like. So what we're actually doing is the bottom and top rail, we're always going to mark these together. And the reason for this is it's very easy if you're marking separately to make mistakes. For example, you could mark the line there at the first stud and the, the cross could go on the opposite side and then you end up with sort of studs running diagonally and not landing in the right place. 
by marking them this way together all the studs are going to line up nicely uh, on either end at the top and the bottom i hope that makes sense okay so as you can see i'm just going to finish this off with one last stud there in the middle i'm going to draw a straight line across both the top and bottom rail with my saw there put a little cross for where the stud's going to land and then I'm just going to double check the gaps in them just to make sure I'm happy and there we go and then following that I'm going to be cutting the studs just passing these down to my brother to lie in place and he's just going to fix them in exactly the same way we fixed the previous studs in the previous wall and there you go as you can see that is the front wall all fixed together. Two fixings either end. We used our marks to line those studs up and that way there's absolutely no way you can make any mistakes. Following that, we're just gonna take it in place. It slots in nice and easy between those walls because we measured it nice and tight. And it is literally just a case of fixing into the adjoining walls. Again, I'm gonna add about five fixings. One at the top, one at the bottom, one in the middle and a couple more in between those just to hold that securely. I'll do that in in either corner of the stud work. So you can see once I've done that side, I'll move across to the other side. And it's exactly the same process. We're just adding around five fixings in here and that's gonna get it nice and secure. Following that, we can actually move on to the floor. And as you'll see here, I'm getting some fixings nice and tight up to the edge of the door. And following that, I'm just gonna cut the bottom rail out in the door opening. So you can do this different ways. You could actually build it in situ, but in my opinion, this is by far the fastest way to do it. Just build it with the bottom piece in and then cut it out afterwards. It's gonna make sure it's nice and solid as well. Once we were completely happy with the walls, then we can start to clad them. And this is pretty straightforward again. I'm cutting, my brother's fixing. The only real difference here is the way we're actually fixing the cladding. Obviously we're not fixing it on the floor, which is one difference. But the main difference here is the style of fixing that we're using. We're still using pins from the second fixed nail gun. However, my brother's using a technique called hidden nailing, where we're actually going to be driving the nails through the tongue. So you can see here, when he fixes, he's putting the nail gun on a slight angle and fixing down through that tongue. And what that's going to do is it's going to hide the nails because the next piece of cladding that goes on, the groove will slot over that tongue, hiding the nails. And it means that looking at this from the front and the side, you're never gonna be able to see any of the fixings. So it's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Okay, so once we finish the side, we're gonna move on to the front, and my brother's gonna work on this left-hand side of the door first, and what you'll notice is he's using the same technique with the hidden nails, but he's also gonna be using a level occasionally. Firstly, on that right-hand side there, he's gonna make sure that the cladding runs through nice and straight, but he's also going to want to try and keep the cladding nice and level and in line with the cladding on the sidewall. And the same on the right hand side of the door here, you're going to see he's using the level occasionally, he's using it on the side as a straight edge, he's using it on the top to keep the cladding boards nice and level, and he's just going to keep doing that all the way up to the top as I cut the boards for him. And what this is going to do is, it's going to mean when we get to the top, either side of this cladding should line through perfectly with the other side, and we can just slot the final piece on top without having to make any adjustments. And, you know, thankfully I'm happy to say that this worked out actually really well. So as you can see, the last bit's going on here. We're just gonna fix that in place. And there we go, guys. That's the walls done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, if you didn't see the base already, I highly advise you go back and watch that video and keep an eye out for the next video where we're gonna be fitting the roof. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you're notified of new videos and I will see you in the next one.